I Wonder Who's Killing Her Now is a 1975 comedy directed by Stephen Hilliard Stern, starring Bob Dishy, Joanna Barnes, Bill Dana, Steve Franken, Harvey Jason, Richard Libertini, Jack DeLeon, George Mamali, and a lot of other people who walked onto the sets of American sitcoms in the 60s and 70s. And that's the vibe of this movie. A 70s sitcom minus the laugh track. It really needs a laugh track. Jordan Oliver is an inept embezzler who needs his wife's money to replace the money he stole on the day his wife announces her intent to divorce. He concocts a scheme to have his wife insured and then murdered. When his plan falls through, he rushes to prevent his wife's murder, tracking down the man he contracted to do the deed, only to learn the hit was subcontracted to another, less capable hitman. They track down the subcontractor, who subcontracted the job to an even more incompetent hitman, and so on. First thing is, this thing is trying to be a comedy and doesn't try to be anything else. It doesn't try to be a drama, doesn't want you to worry about the married couple, it doesn't try to keep you in suspense unless it's building to a joke. It's a shaggy dog story, a plot that acts like a clothesline for all the comedians to hang their jokes onto. And this is an old fashioned comedy. Comedy tends to have a freshness date, and this movie's comedy was old fashioned when it premiered. This movie came out the same year as Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This movie came out the same year Blazing Saddles was nominated for three Oscars. Meanwhile, these comedians were from another time. The Catskills era, the Henny Youngman era. These are dad joke comedians. Well, more like uncle joke comedians. Not really talking to the kids, but not forgetting they're in the room. So, these jokes are safe for broadcast TV. Nothing explicit here. Offensive, maybe, but not explicit. The point is, this is old comedy gone bad. It's spoiled milk. And when a comedy can't make you laugh, it's very hard to find a reason to sit through it. This film was one of Stephen Stern's first and few attempts at directing comedy. He would end up pivoting back to dramas, for the most part, and over the next two decades, he'd end up making a lot of TV films, especially in the action genre. The screenwriter, Mickey Rose, was an established sitcom writer who also co-wrote two of Woody Allen's early funny movies. I Wonder Who's Killing Her Now, meanwhile, is all Mickey Rose. Student Bodies makes a lot more sense now. So, how do you make it through this movie? One thing you can do is imagine Peter Sellers in it. He was originally recruited to bring his sophisticated chameleonic style to the story, but he backed out due to health problems. If he'd done this movie 10 years prior, who knows which role, or how many of them, he would have played. Another thing to get you through this movie is figure out where you've seen these guys before. Bewitched, I Dream of Genie, Barney Miller, Star Trek, there's a lot of hours of television among all these clowns. If you've watched movies or TV from the pre-cable era, be it the first time around or on those TV rerun channels, you could birdwatch this thing, print out the cast list from IMDB or somewhere, and distract your bored mind by trying to figure out what show or movie you've seen any of these guys in before. And if somebody could email me which scene that Charlie's mom from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was in in this movie, I'd really appreciate it. I'd really rather not watch this movie again. The best advice I can offer is, don't expect to laugh. The second time I watched it, I went in knowing it wasn't going to make me laugh. And yet I laughed. Once. I won't tell you which scene, I'm a bit embarrassed by it, and it probably won't be the one joke that you'll laugh at either. That's a good thing about this film, that it keeps trying and trying from different angles. So maybe you'll find your needle in this haystack as well.